So welcome back everybody once again this is Kevin from CSMI in Australia today doing a special video on the Mammoth BC8 built by Cross RC. We want to thank our partners uh, Crazy Hobbies uh, who have provided us with this model to make this particular video happen. So thanks Crazy Hobbies. They're based in New South Wales uh, in Australia. Uh, there is a link to their details in the description of the video and also from CSMI we can buy this truck from any of these two places. So um, the box is quite heavy actually. It's about 30 kilos um, or 26 and a half pounds. The length is about 80 centimeters, which is 31 inches. Um, the size, the, the width is about 40 centimeters, which is 16 and a half inches. And then the width is about 180 centimeters, which is about roughly seven inches. So. At 26 pounds or 13 kilos, it's quite a heavy truck. Let's go ahead and uh, open this box and see what it's all about. There's a few videos on this particular truck um, out there. But we're going to go through a few details and spec it out and tell you what exactly you can even do more to make this truck even better. The truck's been around for quite some time. It's a 110 scale. Um, I do have a Tatra which I bought a while ago and this is another truck I wanted to actually buy for a very long time. Okay. Pretty good packing um, guys. Okay. Oh, this is this is one of the um, one of the trucks which has got a lot of detail. It's got a lot of torque for its size. It's quite powerful, and it's got some amazing climbing capabilities compared to some of the other models in its uh, in its range. Let's get rid of the box. Just want to make sure that it's positioned um, properly for the camera. Okay, there you go. So. There's two versions in it. One is called the flagship version, which has a lot more extras in it, a lot of metal parts, and then you've got the standard version, which is a lot more uh, cheaper. Um, there it is. Let's open the box and see what is inside. Beautifully packed, no damage. Get the tape cut out. I know it's going to be... It's going to definitely take some time to put this truck together, considering the amount of parts it has. And you want to be cautious when you're assembling, especially when you're crawling, to put a lot of uh, Loctite, wherever it's required, so that you're not losing screws, nuts, bolts, washers as you're crawling. So there you go. I'm going to get the camera a little bit closer. I know there's a few videos on this unboxing uh, done before me, but for all of those who follow my other channels on the construction equipment, this was just an addition. So, good quality sticker. Nice, fat manual. I'm going to close it so you can see. I know that they did some revisions on it and they did stick some uh, extra uh, printouts after they found that probably it wasn't the right detail in there. I've seen that in some other videos also. But good quality booklet, very well printed, um, nice semi-gloss finish. Looks like it's very self-explanatory. So I don't think it should be any drama to build this particular truck, considering you got this good booklet to go with it. Especially when you get some of the other models from China where there isn't much information uh, when you get the actual model. Um, as usual, multiple different bags that have serial numbers that probably correspond with the book that tell you what it actually is for. I generally recommend people not to open the bag, otherwise you mix parts and then you're just constantly searching uh, for parts and this makes it harder. Grab a bag, take what you need, leave the rest of the contents as it is so it's more manageable. Um, well, the tires uh, are nice and solid. So just for dimension, they are quite soft actually, So which is good because 
As long as they can take the weight of the truck, they'll offer excellent grip. It makes it much more easier. The surface isn't even to actually climb. So I'll give you some dimensions. Uh, roughly the outside diameter is five and a quarter inch or it's about 130 mil. The width you're looking at about 50 or slightly more than 50 mil or slightly above two inches. I'll bring it closer to give you guys a bit of a detail. I'm sure some of you have seen it, some of you haven't. I know that there's a pattern. You've got to see the flow of the thread when you mount it on the rim. So that's very, very important. You need to you make sure that you get the direction of rotation right on the tires. So bag of tires, put that on the side. So a lot of metal parts in here. Looks like this is for the transmission and uh, the CV joints or the axle joints. This must be the upgrade bag of parts. I'm going to put that aside. Okay, this, this is uh, parts for the cab. I know that these are actually gauges to set the suspension right. You have hard and soft, so obviously marked, and it tells you how much of travel you can have based on the, ang on the angle set up up here. And this actually clips onto the frame. So that's a really good uh, tool that they have provided. There's some hubcaps over here. Let's bring it closer so you can see. I know that Maz is a very popular Russian truck back in the day. I don't know if they're still in existence. I've always been a fan of uh, massive uh, Russian trucks. And they have particular application, which is mostly military. Uh, you don't really see them on civil for civil use. Some more brackets and supports. Uh, Wow, that's heavy. That is heavy. So, I don't know what the weight is, but it definitely feels heavy. It's a solid gearbox, comes completely assembled with the motor. I know that people have uh, upgraded the motor to different uh, versions. One of the popular ones is the Revolver from Holmes Hobby. Um, I'm going to try this for starters. If not, I might actually upgrade the motor. I want to see how much stock this thing puts up before I actually go ahead. Um, going further... I mean, there's a lot of packing now. This this is another heavy bag. It contains um, the turntable, which is made of metal. Lots of fine hinges. You have got the load sharing uh, beam for the rear axles. I don't know if it's clear. Let me just pull that out. It looks pretty interesting. Or something I can share and show you, guys. Okay. I mean, we will be making some more videos where I can probably show them more detail. Okay, so. This is metal, okay, and it is the load sharing beam for the rear axles, and it's it is solid, it is absolutely solid. Pretty good finish from what I can see. Amazing quality for the price. I mean, it's really worth um, the money that you pay every single cent, uh, you know, even though it's two thousand uh, dollars or around or thereabout plus shipping or taxes, it just depends upon where you are. But that is just an indicative uh, price, 2100 Australian dollars. Um, this is uh, the chassis rail. This is just uh, unbelievable. Looks pretty sturdy and solid. I'm just going to open this thing, give you guys a, a closer look on it. Unreal. So, moment of truth. I mean, look at that. Just look at that. That's beautiful quality. Here's a bit of a cross section of what it looks like. Let me see if I can show you that then properly. So, beautifully crafted. Nice black matte finish. I'll give you some dimensions again on this rail, how long it is. So, for those of you who are interested, it's, I'll bring it closer so you can actually also see, it's about 745 millimeters, which is two and a, um, two feet, five and a half inches, right? So pretty long for 750 mil or, or 24 inches plus uh, 22 feet, uh, five and a half inches. I'm not used to Imperial. Um, you want to know the width? The width's about... 
70 mil or two and three quarter inches or thereabout. So it's pretty strong, heavy duty chassis. And I believe the real life truck must have some similar construction if you know everything is built to scale. Um, haven't seen a chassis so so ruggedly and so so sturdily built before. So that's something new for me also. Let's go further that way. Another heavy bag. So split rims, completely metal. You can hear the sound in it, right? Can't wait to put this together. I'm just impatient to get into it. Um, so I hope you, you guys can see there's a bit of reflection from the bag. Excuse me for that. But that's the bag of the rims. Okay, I know when you get the upgrade kit, I think so. This is just a spare, not that you really need it, but these are all the frames for um, for the axles up there. That's a tree for that. So that can stay back in there. More parts. This is um, the gearbox that actually sits behind the cab. Um, this, I think, is... Uh, there's a cooling fan in here, some electronics like lights and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all the light kit and the light kit and all the electronic bits to go with it. It's got a diagram that shows you the motor, um, all that kind of stuff. So this is pretty good. They give you um, a tool kit to go with it. So you got some cross RC drivers. Uh, some gauges, some small spanners, there's a speaker inside, there's some grease inside. Just makes it handy for those who are new into the game and want to start and don't have any tools. It's a good starter for them. Um, there's also a hook and a wire in there. So that's that. What else we got? Okay, so in this kit, I actually thought the front bumper was plastic. But looking at it, the front bumper is actually metal. So that's pretty impressive. I actually thought it had a plastic bumper. So as you can see, the front bumper is actually made of metal. So another heavy bag with some brackets, some screws, some bushes. Um, and finally, the box that actually has the cab. Wow. That is a solid cab. These are these are going to come out. They're just supports. Uh, well, they probably cast this cab. Now, if if you actually look at this cab, you know you can see the finish. You know it's pretty good. It's it's as good as the Tamiya cabs. It's pretty straight. It's square. A lot of detail. And you know it's it's quite complicated to build a die, uh, guys. It's quite expensive to build a mold or a die uh, of this size to get something like this in this finish because as you can see. There's a lot of indentation, there's a lot of marking, there's a lot of detail, you know, the simple things like this. I'll bring it closer so you can actually see. You know, simple things like this to actually make it in the die is quite complicated and tricky so that you get a smooth finish in the end product. So, you know, good on Cross RC for doing um, such a great job uh, in producing this truck because I, I'm just baffled to understand how they got the drawings how they got the dimensions, how much effort has actually been put in or how many months of work has actually been taken to develop the drawings and then having the determination to understand that there's a market for a truck like this. So there's, there's hours and hours and months and weeks of time actually put in to, to get an end product and then you know have the confidence that this is going to sell. So good job, um, Cross RC, on doing um, building such a beautiful product. Um, so that's the the base of um, the the truck itself or the cab. I'm sure, looking at the finish, you know it fits perfectly well. There must be some tabs that actually locks in. There you go. Feels nice and sturdy. It's not flimsy or weak. Um, yeah, it actually locks in. You can see that there's a profile. On the inside so where it actually fits in so there's a guide 
I don't know if I can show it in the video up here. See, there's a guide on the inside. So it actually sits in place nice and firm. It's not going to move uh, anyway. That's a very good design. Um, yeah, so that's that's the cab. For those of you who are interested, I'll give you some dimensions on the cab too. I'll give you the dimensions of the base, so how wide this is. So that's about 245 millimeters. Or it's about nine and a half or uh, nine and a half inches, right? Um, the actual length of the cab itself is close to a feet, or it's 300, 305 or 310 millimeters. So it's over a feet, so it's about 12 and a quarter inches, you know. So it's quite a, quite a long cab. And in terms of how wide it is, it's about uh, 95, 195 millimeters or seven and three quarter inches, right? Yeah, about seven and three quarter inches. So quite a big cab, um, you know, for, for a truck. I do have a Tatra um, cab that I'm just modifying. I'll give you a comparison between a Tatra and um, this cab, just so you know. <laughs> So I'm back again. Um, let me just make sure I don't drop this cab. So here's my Tatra cab, which I'm actually building still. So I'm doing some modification with the lighting and hence I pulled it apart. And here is, um, here is a cross RC cab. Let me see if I can get that in the screen up here. Okay, so. Um, so obviously the Tatra cab is a lot more wider than the BC-8. Let me put this on the top so you can see it a bit better. How about that? Okay. So there you go. So the Tatra cab is still a lot more wider than the BC-8. Let's put this up here. So. Yeah, so that gives you a bit of a comparison, you know. Um, I still like the Tatra because it's a full metal body uh, cab compared to um, the BC-8, but the BC-8 is much more lighter and has a lot more torque in it, you know. Um, so that's all that we have in this particular video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. There are links in the, in the description where you can buy this. Um, if you have any questions, please email it to info at csmi.com.au. Uh, I'll bring it up so you can see it. It's up here. So that's that's the website, uh, www.csmi.com.au. And you can just email at info at csmi.com.au. If you have any questions, uh, we'll let you, we can see how we can help you. And if you want to buy, there's two places you can buy this truck from. One is from csmi.com.au or also at Crazy Hobbies in New South Wales in Australia. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next video.